Super Talk Mississippi Media Production. Joining us now, Graham Hall. He covers the Florida Gators for Swamp 24-7. And Graham, you and I talked back in the summer when we were I was going around doing opponent previews. And we both agreed, I think, at that time that this was a, a pivotal game for both of these teams, that this was going to be a game that that determined a lot about the season for these teams. Somehow, in the weeks since then, it has gotten more crucial, more pivotal uh, for both of the, the sides. Let's start with the really hard question that's going on in Gainesville. If Florida loses this game, do they let Billy Napier go after it? I think it's a fair question. I think that a lot remains to be seen here. You know, Florida has a bye week after this, and if you're going to transition to an interim head coach, that's the ideal time to do it. Give them, what, 11 days to prepare with someone new, restore some confidence, let them adjust to their newfound responsibilities. That would make a ton of sense. Rather than doing it when you got a game six days later, I do think that would make a ton of sense. Now, I also think that there's an argument to be made that Florida should maybe not pull the plug just quite yet here. Not saying that necessarily Florida is going to turn it around and go on a you know seven-game win streak when you look at the rest of their schedule here. But I do think that from a financial perspective, you're going to pay him whether he's here or not. Who on the coaching staff is well-equipped to lead Florida to being even more competitive? I don't know if there's a name out there considering that Billy Napier is the offensive play caller and he's so heavily involved in so many aspects of that program that you could see Florida's competitive chances decline a little bit. So maybe they try and ride it out a little bit longer. They're not going to be able to hire one of those top head coaches right now in the middle of the season, whether it's a, a Lane Kiffin, you know, a Dan Lanning, whoever they decide to target out there, those teams are going to be in the college football playoff conversation and they're not going to leave their programs in the middle of the year. So you might as well wait it out, continue raising the funds for the buyout, scour what's out there, see how these coaches do, and then keep assessing. But it, it definitely is going to be even more deafening the calls for Billy Napier's tenure to end if Florida goes up there to Starkville this weekend and, and falls to the Bulldogs. Another thing we talked about back during the uh, the, the summer was DJ Lagway, Graham Mart- Mertz. How does Florida incorporate Lagway into the offense? He's too talented to, to sit out. I think we made a uh, – you may have made a Chris Leak, Tim Tebow comparison uh, to that. I thought Lagway was incredibly impressive against Samford. Obviously, the, the level of competition jumped up last week, but Mertz was was okay last week. He's 12 of 15. Didn't Couldn't throw the ball down the field, though. Is there a, a scenario here where Lagway just takes over? What's the quarterback situation going to be coming into this game? I think that Florida's going to be a little bit more flexible with their rotating at the position. I think you're going to see both guys early, and that whoever has more success early on is going to get extended series in that contest. Last week against Texas A&M, you saw Florida be really strict when it came to rotating the quarterbacks. Neither one of those guys got consecutive series. I could see that changing, absolutely. I think the key here is which quarterback gives you the best chance, not at you know running the offense effectively, which is something that Billy Napier has reiterated is one of the key components, but who can navigate the issues along the offensive line the best? You look at Lagway's athleticism, his ability to step out, get outside the pocket, use his legs to pick up some some chunk yardage outside of the play call. You look at Florida's offensive line, they have not protected very well. Lagway maybe give you a, gives you a better chance to create downfield explosive plays even when the pocket collapses. Graham Mertz took a lot of contact last year. He took a, a lot of contact, obviously, when he got knocked out of that game against Miami. If the pocket continues to be an issue, I could see that being another reason why Lagway gets some extended time here. But I do think that it's quite clear that this is still Graham Mertz's team. He is still the leader within that building, not just as a six-year quarterback. He is the guy that Florida trusts the most to manage the offense, and he's going to be the starter until something happens, until Lagway comes out against SEC competition and absolutely tears it up, which it may be this week, it may be in the weeks ahead, who knows when it's going to be. It's going to be Graham Mertz who is going to continue to see the field consistently and get the first snap for Florida on offense. Running the football is going to be key in this game. And Mississippi State has been bad at it this year. Florida has not been great at it this year in, in their games against power competition. State hasn't been good against it, and they haven't played really power competition. So that's a really scary thought when you look at, at State's schedule. Is this game just as simple for you as whoever can run the football and stop the run is probably going to win? 
Yeah, absolutely. I think it comes down to the line of scrimmage, especially whichever defensive line is able to get penetration in the backfield there. Whoever's able to open up holes in the run game is going to have a, a really good chance at emerging victorious on Saturday. I do think that for Florida, Billy Napier, what he has long done in his coaching career is establish the run and get some balance on offense. And then the passing game opens itself up. But the Gators have had to force a lot of passes when they haven't really desired to do that because they haven't run the ball effectively. Behind Montreal Johnson, you have a stable of underclassmen there, along with a Juco transfer in Jacoby Jackson. Montreal Johnson can be explosive. You saw it against Miami. He had that 71-yard touchdown run. But he hasn't really had a lot of open holes to run between the tackles so far this season. Florida's going to have to find a way – maybe get a little bit creative with their play calling and their scheme to be able to run the football because it's just not working what they've been doing. They're going to keep trying until they absolutely have to give up at running the football, but that is going to be a huge key in this game. Whichever team can run the football is going to give themselves a really good chance of getting that win on Saturday. On the defensive side, Florida giving up over 300 yards rushing a week ago to Texas A&M. What, what, what do they need to do there to adjust? I mean, set the edge, get pressure in the backfield, scheme better i think that you look at a lot of the play calling decisions on defense here this is a team that is not succeeding in cover one cover three you look at how they're playing off the ball when they're choosing to blitz and the penetration and like i said that they're getting off the edge that has just been an issue for florida not even just this season going back last year you have some guys who have talent at that defensive end f position they like to call it there Tyreek Sapp, Justice Boone coming back. You have a highly touted freshman in L.J. McCray. But outside of that Sanford game, they have not pressured the quarterback. They didn't get a sack last week against Texas A&M. Again, a mobile quarterback in Marcel Reed. And they've struggled with mobile quarterbacks, like I said, dating back not even just to last season, but really throughout Billy Napier's entire tenure here in Gainesville. They're going to have to find a way to have some success with the pass rush. If they don't affect the quarterback and, and Chapin has some time in the pocket here, the Gators could certainly be in a difficult situation here against this Mississippi State offense. And that's going to be one of the keys to the game, certainly. You have to get pressure from the front seven, whether it's blitzing with your linebackers as well, taking advantage of the speed that you got. at at end. if they can't do that, then they're going to have trouble to stop whatever offense is out there, not even just Mississippi State. And you know that there's some talented ones the rest of the way that they're going to have to face. I feel like both of these teams, to say confidence is low, is probably not an understatement. And I, I really do feel like if one team can get out on the other one quickly, there it, it's going to be a long day for that other team. I don't see a close game here. I think I don't know who wins, but I, I don't think it's going to be a close game. Would you agree with where I'm going there, or do you think either team can keep it close if they fall behind quick? I think that whatever team falls into an early hole is going to struggle to come back. I do think that for Florida, from a confidence standpoint, they really need to execute on those opening drives, not fall into a double-digit hole like they did against Miami and Texas A&M. Otherwise, you're going to see that morale take another hit for the Gators. I, I do think that getting some early momentum is going to be key. And if they can't have success with, you know, fans love to say that scripted drive, if you don't have success with the scripted drive, you're really kind of doubting your entire game plan and you're putting the onus of adjusting on the head coach. And I don't know if Billy Napier has really inspired belief, not just within his team, but in the fan base that they're going to be able to adjust to what the defense is showing throughout the contest. So getting some early momentum is going to be key. I know that, you know, against Texas A&M, they fell into that 33 to seven hole, got some touchdowns there in the second half. So I'm not saying they can't do it necessarily here. And I do think that that second half against the Aggies was critical to the belief a little bit to not get, entirely blown out based on the scoreboard there in Gainesville. But Florida, I think, is going to need to start early. If they fall into an early hole, they could certainly face a double-digit loss up there in Starkville. Same thing, though, I think, with the Bulldogs. If if Florida can go out there and have, you know, execute no matter who is under center, get an early double-digit lead and stop this Mississippi State offense and go into the second half with a double-digit lead, I could easily see this being a three-score game. If not, if both teams are trading scores, given the holes that they have on defense, I do think it could potentially be a close game there in the fourth quarter, and that is going to make things really, really interesting here because the Gators have not won too many narrow contests. Last year they won one at South Carolina, but they fell to Arkansas. They they blew a chance to beat Missouri last year when they had a fourth and 17 and gave up a massive game there late in the season. So certainly that is a a factor for Florida right now is making sure that they – 
stay out of a close contest heading into the fourth quarter because I don't think people are going to be too optimistic that they're going to be able to close it out if that's the case. Only about 30 seconds left. Every week on the podcast, we we, we do an offensive and defensive playmaker, and then we do an X factor, a guy maybe not the player of the game, but could make a big play to swing the game. Who is that guy for Florida? I think Montreal Johnson just, you know, he may get two, three run yards on every single run, but if he can get a 60 yard gain, a 70 yard gain, and Florida can find a way to score quickly, that's going to be huge. Another one is Eugene Wilson, the third. You know, he didn't play against Texas AM. He's their most dynamic wide receiver. What is going to be his status for this contest? He was a game time decision against the Aggies. We're going to find out on the availability report what his status could be for this contest. He's certainly one. And in Lagway is a pretty obvious one, I think, for Florida. If you can find some success, some explosive plays, from from your freshman quarterback, that's obviously going to change the game. The Gators don't score quickly very well. If they can do that with Lagway or Johnson and get Eugene Wilson involved, they're going to have a lot better chance at getting this win on Saturday. Graham Hall, Swamp 24-7, man. Thanks so much for your time. I'll see you in the press box on Saturday. Looking forward to it. Looking forward to getting to Starkville for the first time. A Super Talk Mississippi media production.